Shalom, brother and sister. So glad to be able to pray together with all of you. I'm so thankful to God. Nothing can stop us to pray and also to worship Him. Today, I would like to share with you my exhortations and the theme is Water Your Master's Seed. The mustard seed is one of the smallest seeds that we can encounter in our world today, with the exact size of around 1 to 2 millimeters. Despite its size, the scriptures has referenced the seed various times in the New Testament. They come in different colors from yellowish white to black, depending on the variety of mustard plants they come from. Interesting, right? Variety. For me, it just represents diversity. Jesus used the mustard seed as an analogy for the kingdom of God, and he also encouraged his disciples to have faith mustard seed size. In Luke chapter 13, verse 18 to 19, we read Jesus describing God's kingdom as like a master seed. Then he said, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a master seed, which a man took and put in his garden, and it grew and became a large tree, and the birds of the air nested in its branches. This gives us several ideas about God's kingdom. We can think of it as a as the spread of the gospel into the world, starting from a ragtag group of disciples, God can use any one of us who is obedient to share His love to the lost and even just right after you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because it is not about you being successful or how capable you are. It is about the power that comes from God's character and promises. We can also think of it as the growth of the church where it starts with only a few people who spread the gospel and end up with many people being saved. We can even think of it as the growth of a Christian beginning from the time he or she received the seed of the gospel at salvation to growing in Christ-likeness. No one starts his Christian life by being made perfect right from salvation. All of us need to go through the process of sanctification which will continue until Christ comes. In Luke chapter 17, verse 5 to 6, we also read of Jesus using a master seat to teach us about faith. And the, and the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith, so the Lord said, If you have faith as a master seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Faith is such a powerful gift from God. Christ told his disciples that with just a tiny master, a no tiny measure of it, the size of a master seed, they could tell this mulberry tree to go plant itself in the sea and it would do so. The illustration of the, the obedient mulberry tree may have been descriptive of apostolic power that they were to receive. But the point is that faith is powerful. Faith expects success and victory no matter what the, the odds against it. Faith in God can accomplish anything that God intends for it to accomplish. Jesus emphasized the importance of having faith. Regarding His second coming, Jesus asked this question, When the Son of Man comes, will He really find faith on the earth? Why was Jesus concerned about people having faith? Hebrew chapter 11 verse 6 tells us why faith is so important to God. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God expects us to have faith and grow, to grow in faith. And if we really believe God and live according to that faith, then God will be pleased and we are going to be blessed. But lacking faith and failing to live by faith displeases God. So, let us water our master seed. By the way, why do we need to water our master seed? People often begin to lose faith in God as a result of their life experiences. If you are honest, 
all, if not most of us, have gone through this or in the midst of going through it. Some face things that seem cruel and unbearable. Others are confronted with information presented from a secular viewpoint that rejects God. Through experiences like this, people start questioning whether the God of the Bible truly has the answer to life's problem. As they begin to doubt God, their faith begins to waver and weaken. As a result of their doubts, they may stop worshipping and communicating with God, which in turn make it even easier for their faith to diminish and eventually die. God wants us to reach out to Him in faith, even when our faith feels very small. As such, we must water our master seeds so that our faith is always alive and growing. If you feel that you are losing faith in God, reach out to God anyway. Master the small amount of faith you have to tell Him exactly how you feel and to seek His word for answer to your life. Surround yourself with strong Christian people who will support you through your times of doubt. That's why all of us should be connected to a cell or small group that we will be able to encourage and support one another. Even you are a leader or 30 years old Christian, does not mean that you will not have challenges or being challenged in life. Or if you are aware of it, does not mean that you can handle it alone. You are not meant to be alone. Having said that, how to water the master seed or grow your master seed faith? Whether you are a gardener or not, you have probably planted seeds at some point in your life. It's fascinating to see the first tender sprouts poke through the soil and reach for the sun. The daily growth is magical to watch until at last the fruit is ready to be harvested or the flower blooms in brilliant color. So, what can gardening teach us about growing master seed faith? The gardener needs to make effort, be committed and no shortcut in growing a plant. Make effort to get to know God and nurture a relationship with Him. A relationship can't grow without commitment, without dedicated time and effort. We need to listen to God by studying and learning His Word as well as through prayer. Don't let your sprouting plant get choked out by weeds. Weeds are darkness such as doubt and the negative influences in your life. When in doubt, seek out more sunshine. Find a mentor a trusted friend or pastor who can help you when you are struggling. Before you know it, your tiny master seed will have flourished into a big, beautiful bush giving you a glimpse of the majesty and beauty that await us for all eternity. You should water your master seed not only for your consumption. As we grow, we apply that faith and that faith will continue to grow as long as we are in the Word. We know from Jesus' own words that a tiny mustard seed produces tremendous growth and finally produces a tree-sized plant that can reach a height of 12 feet or more and provides shade and place that birds can perch upon. Faith that begins at the size of a master seed has the potential to grow to a huge and deep faith which can indeed achieve great things for the kingdom of God. When we have faith that weathered storms, we can help people on their spiritual journeys. Let's remember, it is foundational to our identity in Christ Jesus to serve one another in every way we can. We are shaped and formed in the body of Christ to support one another at all times, both good and bad. Brother and sister, water your master seed and become an established tree in the fields of the Lord. Hallelujah! Can I invite you to pray with me now? 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and the gift of life. Dear Lord, you are glorious. There is no one like you. You keep every single promise you make. Thank you that you came to give new life, peace, hope and joy. Thank you that your power is made perfect in our weakness. You are the reason why we are alive today. Thank you for being with us in this difficult year. Thank you that you have carried us through the uncertainty of deep waters, through the flame of trials and through the pain of heart losses. We are constantly aware of how much we need you, your grace, your strength, your power working through even the toughest day. Thank you for your reminder that both in seasons of celebration and in seasons of brokenness, you are still with us, for you never leave us. Thank you for your daily powerful presence in our lives, that we can be assured your heart is toward us, your eyes are over us, and your ears are open to our prayers. Thank you that you surround us with favor as with a shield, and we are safe in your care. Thank you, Father, that you have promised that the testing of our faith produces perseverance and steadfastness, which in time will bring forth the beautiful Christ-like character that you so desire in all your children. Help us to keep our focus first on you this season and not on the things that surround us. Please forgive us for giving too much time and attention to other things, for looking to other people before coming to you first. Help us to reflect again on you. Father, in the name of your Son Jesus, we ask that you increase our faith in you. Help us to remember that you are a mighty God when we are in difficulty. Open our eyes that we may see how mighty you are. Direct our hearts and minds toward you. You are bigger than anything we can think of. Definitely, you are bigger than our problems. Help us to look at the difficulties that uncover us with your eyes and give us an eternal perspective on all the problems we may be called upon to face so that we may count it all joy when we are confronted with various trials, knowing that the testing of our faith produces the godly fruits of patience. Help us, Lord, to use those times of testing as an opportunity to grow in grace and as a springboard to develop a deeper and more secure relationship with you so that we can also be a blessing to others, especially for those you have put into our lives. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for bringing us into this new season up ahead. We look forward to all that you still have in store. In the most precious name of Jesus, we ask and pray. And the people of God shout, Amen.